tubing layout theory is the theory behind creating a sap tubing system to bring all of your maple sap from your trees to a few key locations and collection points. The main goals of your tubing layout are to be easily accessible, simple, to use gravitational flow, and have intuitive collection points. Easily accessible is important because tubing requires maintenance. As you can see in the picture, all the tubes run along a road. This makes them easily accessible for both putting up and maintenance later on in the system. You also want your tubing systems to be simple. As you can see here, all the tubes are bunched together. So even though there are quite a few, they are all in one location. The simpler your tubing system is, the easier it is to maintain and set up. And also, you want to be using your gravitational flow. If you use vacuum, gravitational flow becomes less important. However, in most systems, especially for those first setting up a system, you're going to be using gravity, whether to generate natural vacuum or just to have all your sap flow downhill. This sounds simple enough, starting your tubes high and running them down the hill to your collection points, but especially if you ever have to cross flatter ground or a lesser slope, you just want to make sure that you are definitely running downhill. And the final thing to think about is your collection point. You want to create an intuitive and easily accessible collection point, whether that is somewhere along a road in your woods or at your sugar shack itself, your collection points need to be somewhere where you can get to easily to collect your sap. If your collection point ends up somewhere that is not accessible or not necessarily the most convenient, it is time to start thinking of other solutions, whether that is pumping your sap from that collection point elsewhere or maybe even building a road to that area. Use your landscape to your advantage. It is something that is unique to your property and can provide you with a huge advantage in your tubing layout if used properly. The next step is to look at your landscape and look at where your maples are. And a couple things to help visualize your landscape from the comfort of your home are Google Earth and topographic maps. Of course, walking your land is a very easy way to get a good handle on what your landscape offers, but if you like to plan things out, whether on a computer or a piece of paper, Google Earth and topographic maps can be very helpful. Both of these things are available online. For the rest of this and the examples that I'm about to provide, we will be using topographic maps. Here you see a topographic map. And the examples we're about to cover are two very common tubing setups. The first is going to be side hill. But just to touch on topographic maps for a moment, Topographic maps use something called topographic lines, which you can see here as the brown squiggly lines on this map. Topographic lines indicate a specific altitude, and each one is an equal number of feet apart in vertical height. This means that if they're very close together, you're gaining a lot of vertical height in a short amount of time, meaning you have a steep area, and if they're further apart, you're not gaining a lot of height quickly and so you have a more flat area. And high points on topographic maps often look like bullseyes. So in this example, this purple arrow is indicating the high point. And as you can see, there's a tighter circle with bigger circles um, moving away from it. And that is how you know you're, that is the top of a hill or a mountain. So here first you start by identifying your high point, which we just did with this purple arrow. Then you need to draw on your map where your maples are, and here we're representing that by an orange square. The next is to identify your main slope. And so here, our main slope follows these green arrows down towards that river bottom, away from the high point. Next, you wanna look at secondary slope, and this is because you're going to have multiple lines running in slightly different directions. So maple systems also often start with a main line and have the laterals feeding off of that. So your main line wants to follow one of these slopes. And here our secondary slope is kind of sloping towards the word example. And that is where we're gonna have our main line. 
And the reason for having our main line at the bottom of our main slope, but sloping towards our example is because we have to have some slope on the main line, but we wanna have it at a place where we can run the most laterals into it. So here, all our laterals represented by these blue lines would be running from the top of the property down towards the bottom and into that yellow main line. And this is a pretty simple tubing setup for a side hill. The next example is a ravine. Again, we start by identifying our high point with that purple arrow. And again, we box in our maples with an orange box. And next, we find our main slope, which is again going to be away from our high point. And now we look for a secondary slope. And in a ravine, there's actually two, both sloping in towards that creek bottom in the center. And here, we're going to use that to our advantage for our main line. So we're going to put our main line in the bottom of that creek bed, running again downhill towards the word example. And from there, our laterals can come in to the main line from either side following that secondary slope represented by the red arrows. And this allows us to have one main line with the most number of laterals running into it. There are many things to consider in your tubing system. Those were two very brief, basic examples and to start you thinking. However, every tubing system is going to be unique. Nobody's land is the same and everybody's tubing needs are different. But some things to consider are things like sap ladders. This is a solution if your tubes have to cross a driveway or a road is with vacuum or natural vacuum, you can actually push sap up and over the road. Or if you don't have vacuum, you can just start very high on one side of the road and run across it at a slight slope, um, giving plenty of room underneath for cars to drive. However, sap ladders tend to be more complicated and are something that research should be done into before putting them in your woods. The next thing is sap collection points. Both those examples only had one collection point, and in theory, those would either be where you put your sugar shack or maybe on a road or in the end of your driveway, somewhere that's easily accept accessible. But what if you can't have all your tubing run to the same point, or what if that point is not super accessible? Then you have to start thinking of other solutions, whether that's pumping your sap from that collection point to elsewhere, or maybe having two collection points that you drive a truck between and over to your sugar shack. Both those things are doable, but something to, be, to think about. The next is tubing assemblies. Most of the tubing systems you see are set up with a few basic parts between T's, unions, and saddle connectors and end hooks, but there are many different tubing assemblies on the market. And it, it pays to sit down with your dealer's catalog and look through it and look at all your different options. There might be a solution in there for a problem that is specific to your property. And the last thing is think about maintaining access. You don't want to run your tubes across your roads where you cannot drive. You want to be able to maintain access to your woods. And there are a lot of things that can help with this. Between sap ladders, there are also things called quick connects where you can easily connect and disconnect tubing to let yourself through an area, or even just maybe biting the bullet and having two collection points to leave a main thoroughfare open. This also goes though for maintaining access to where you might want to expand. Don't set up a tubing system that totally excludes a patch of maples that you might want to include in a later year. Start thinking about your expansion process before you set up your initial tubing because that way in future years it will be easier and cheaper to expand your sugar bush. And as an ending note, I just want to remind people that everybody's sugar bush is unique. Nobody's tubing system looks the same and what works for you might not work for your neighbor. So take the time to look at your land and your needs and set up a tubing system that is perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you.